Hi, uh, this is uh, Joshua Gross. We've got Attorney General Henry McMaster with us this morning, and uh, we're enjoying the last day of the convention now. Uh, Attorney General, how, uh, how have you liked the convention so far, and what have you thought about uh, what we've heard? I thought it's, it's been a great convention. Uh, I was not president in 1980 when Ronald Reagan got the nomination, but I've heard people comparing the, the feeling of this one with the feeling of that one. I've been to a lot of them, and this is very exciting. The speakers have been terrific. The message has been superb. The candidates are wonderful. We've got a great team, and it, it makes it gives me great hope and comfort to know that there are people like these from all over the country willing up, willing to stand up and come forward and do this work. And so it's quite a comfortable feeling for the future, for my children, for their children, to know that we are still producing this kind of quality, quality leadership. You uh, actually have had a job here at this uh, convention. You've been the, the sergeant at arms. What uh, what did that entail and how did that come about? Well, like all jobs in politics, they, they're all volunteer jobs. And, uh, the chairman of the party, Mike Duncan, asked me to be sergeant at arms. The sergeant at arms is technically under the House rules, the U.S. House representative rules. We, go by with John Boehner as the presiding officer. I'm the sergeant at arms and my job is to, with a lot of help uh, in a network of people out there, is to keep order, to keep people comfortable so the proceedings can proceed in an orderly fashion. And we have people wearing different colored hats with different kind of jobs and a, a reporting network and an information network to help people get to where they're going and to keep things from getting out of hand. Or, and that's what we've been doing, and, uh, and it's gone very well. It's been a very smooth convention. It has been. Um, talk to us about what being a conservative Republican means to you. How does that play out in the way, in the job that you do as Attorney General for, uh, for South Carolina? Well, the, the Republican Party today is the conservative party, clearly, in this country. But being a, a conservative is, is based on a number of principles. And the center of it is, is the individual, it's not the government. I don't believe it. it's the individual where the, the promise and opportunity lies. The government has certain things that it, that it and only it can do. So we need to band together to perform certain functions like keeping the country safe, keeping the country clean. We need infrastructure like highways and things like that. But the rest is to be done by us on that playing field that is. Protected or established by the government, but the, the drive comes from within the individual heart and the ambition and the hopes of the people, not from a government trying to pull them up. It's the people rising to the, the level of their God given potential. And that's a big difference between the Republican and Democratic Party, or the Liberal Party today, which would be the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. The, if you watch the debates and watch the speeches of, uh, all the way through the Democratic Convention and all the way through the Democratic primaries, at every, every opportunity somebody was asking for something. The, the statement, the beautiful words of John Kennedy in 1960, ask, not what, uh, ask what you can do for your country, not what your country can do for you, have been turned on their head. Everyone in those Democratic meetings and in those speeches, they're asking for something somebody else asking and it's to come through government. They want to take, take from you through government to give to me. Well, that's, that's not right. If I could give up everything that I have in order to satisfy that desire and end it, I'd gladly do it if they just leave my children and their children and the next generation alone. That's the attitude that has affected the Democratic Party and the Liberals and frankly it scares me. And it is, it is assisted by the press, and that is it's becoming accepted to believe that someone else is supposed to take care of you. Someone else through the government is going to take care of, of you and me. That's not the way to create strong people, not the way to create a strong, vibrant country that can protect all of our people and let them live in, in health and prosperity and be the beacon for the rest of the world. A lot of problems about the world in the world. A lot of those countries are not going to figure it out on their own. They need an example, they need a model, 
just as, as we have some great thinkers, the men in the room with the Declaration of Independence grew on the experiences and the knowledge of many, many great thinkers and leaders you know, in, in, in the history. We, we learned from them and these other countries are now learning from us. This country is a miracle of the way we have developed and what we have. And we need to preserve that in order for the rest of the world to learn how, how to do it. And um, I believe we have an attitude of dependency, victimization, or something out there that is, is uh, catching the imagination of more and more people, or maybe it's not the imagination is the right word, but the, the, the comfort is so easy to say, let someone else take care of me. And it's becoming a legitimate Pride, legitimate thought as we get more and more into an entitlement society. The more we go down that road, the weaker the country becomes because the people themselves become weaker and weaker. They don't depend on themselves, they depend on someone else. When the lights go off, when the power's down, when there's nobody help there to help, you've got to rely on your own intuition, your own skills, your own ability, your own heart, your own strength, your understanding, and that's the kind of thing that. that conservative principles that are fully embraced by the Republican Party stand for. I would be remiss if I let you go without one more note, and that is that the state newspaper basically said you're one of the three considered front runners for the 2010 Republican nomination for governor of South Carolina. Have you given any thought to that, or where, where are we in that process? I've given a lot of serious thought to it. Uh, and. It is a great honor to, to be a representative in any way of the state of South Carolina. I think it's the finest place and the finest people in the whole world. I know other people think that about their place. And that's the good news. We're in a country where people all over the country think their state is the finest one in the whole world. But I truly believe that about South Carolina, and it's an honor to be the Attorney General of South Carolina. And as for all the offices, we'll, we'll, we'll make those decisions in due course. Thank you, General. We appreciate you taking time here at the convention. It's a pleasure.